I'm Oliver and I've been designing aquariums ever since I was the age of 10. Today I'm going to be designing a polydarium. Sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Now you may be asking Oliver, what is a polydarium? Well, a polydarium is a half aquarium, half terrarium environment that I'm going to be creating today. First, we need to make the backbone of our polydarium. And the backbone of this polydarium is going to be made from these white boards. We're going to be creating a step-like structure. That way this separates this from the aquarium and terrarium portion. Using silicone, I'm going to be sealing this stair together. Do you notice how I added a little extra room on the top? I added about two to three inches. That way we can have a layer of dirt without it creeping over into our tank. And as you can tell, I'm going to be using silicone here to seal the step to the glass of our aquarium, making a nice clean step. Using that silicone, we're going to be going ahead and adding some to the walls of our aquarium where we want our pond foam. This gives something for our pond foam to hold on to while it's setting on our glass. The way that I applied this foam is by doing it in lines just like this. I would let the bottom half dry out for a little bit before I added more. And here I sped up the process to show you all the little gaps of foam that I missed on some of these spots. This foam will help us cover up the annoying whiteboard that makes our polydarium look unnatural. And here you can already tell that our polydarium is taking good shape. And look at the little lips that I've created with our pond foam. This will prevent any kind of soil falling into our aquarium portion. Let's go ahead and add some soil to this top layer to give it a great substrate for our plants in this top level. And in this case, I'm using some recycled organic potting soil from my previous aquarium that exploded my volcano aquarium. And for here, I'm gonna be adding some more potting soil, this time just straight out of the bag, brand new, some fresh stuff to give it a nice newer look. And for this corner, I had a little bit of excess pond foam in that corner. And so I used my razor blade to cut out all those little bits adding some more room for some more plants. And of course, I'm gonna cover that up with some more potting soil. Now we're gonna add the hardscape. And the hardscape are the rocks and the wood that goes into your aquarium. This is the backbone for your aquariums, terrariums, or polydariums. So you wanna make sure you give extra time for this step and get the position and exact placements that you want. Otherwise, it could be the make or break in your tank. For this build, I ended up spending about 30 minutes rearranging and arranging all of the wood pieces and stone to my liking. And now for this polydarium, I ended up using some West Texas wood that I found out in West Texas and these Ozark Smoky Dragon Stones that are available on my website, link in the description down below. And as you can tell, the layout is super important. So take your time. One of the amazing things about a polydarium is the fact that you can plant as any plant that you want on this top layer. So that can include house plants, larger outdoor plants, or aquatic plants that are in their terrestrial form. So in this case, I'm going to be using a mix of houseplants, aquatic plant species that are grown in their immersed stages. So this is where you can pick and choose between red plants, green plants, blue plants, vines, the works. That's why I love polydariums. You can add as many types of plant species as you want. Do you recommend sticking to a theme? For instance, if you're going to be having a cold water polydarium, I recommend keeping some cooler plants that could adapt to those colder temperatures. But in this polydarium, it's a tropical polydarium, so I'm adding all sorts of jungle and tropical plants. Another great thing about this polydarium is that when you fill your polydarium up to the recommended lip level, you're going to be accessing some of the used aquarium water into the soil and substrate of your top layer. That way, it'll give you extra nutrients to your plants as they're growing, which will really skyrocket the plant growth in your polydarium. I also decided to add this giant air plant to my polydarium that acts as an epiphyte that can rest on these branches. Now let's go ahead and plant that right side of our polydarium, adding a lot more plants. And the more plants you add to your polydarium, the healthier your polydarium is going to get. And as you can tell, there's quite a bit of spacing in between each of these plants. And the reason why is because I'm expecting these plants to really take off with all of the nutrients, the high humidity, and high light in this polydarium. Now, if you're curious to see what type of requirements I keep this polydarium in, check the description down below. I'm gonna have everything listed in terms of equipment and gear. On this right side, I really wanted to go vine heavy, have those vines really span over our water system. Here's a trip to keep your terrarium or polydarium soil nice and moist, is to add some fresh moss over your substrate. And here I wanted to add just some more vines just to really get that good viney texture. Yeah. 
Now let's work on the aquarium portion of our tank and we're gonna have a dirted aquarium portion, which means it's gonna give a lot more nutrients to our plants that are gonna be chilling out in the substrate in the water depths below. So we're gonna add a two to three inch layer of this soil and we're gonna wanna spread it out really evenly. If we have too many hills, it makes it uneven and these pockets of air will make the holodarium explode, which is not what we want at all. So as you can tell, I'm really wetting it down with this water. That way it stays nice and mud-like. That way there's no more pockets of air to prevent any sort of explosion. Now this polydium is starting to take its shape and I'm just loving the way it looks so far. But we can't fill it up yet. We have to add a good two to three inch layer of sand to prevent any of this dirt getting in the water column. And as you can tell, I'm just using some nice sand, but you could use gravel or any other kind of substrate capper on this list. I did the dirty method, but you could also do the entire bottom with aquasol. In my mind, the dirty method just looks more natural. And here, I'm gonna be adding some more hardscape to this underwater portion. Again, using some of that Ozark Smoky Dragonstone that I'm using here. Let's go ahead and add some of the finishing touches with these pieces of stone, and it really is starting to look amazing. Now let's go ahead and fill this up. And I've had really, really strong water pressure here. So I'm gonna be using a bowl and a plate to prevent the water from breaking the surface of the substrate. And for these first few minutes, it did break the substrate, which made it a little extra cloudy and dirty. So I do apologize for that. However, I'll get this cleaned up within a few days. I soon realized that I had forgotten to add some plants to the top half level, so I decided to go back and add some more plants, some of which were some pothos cuttings and some monstera cuttings. Did you know that all of these plants that I have mentioned and have used in this video, I have grown in my greenhouse? That's right, if you wanna see my greenhouse, say subscribe to this channel as I'll have a few videos coming soon about my greenhouse. Let's go ahead and plant the aquarium portion, starting off with some Salvina Minima. These guys are great floaters for beginners. Now I'm gonna add some dollar wort up here on this branch, and in the water, I planted some Bacopa Carolina and some Perscaria yellow bush. Next, let's go ahead and add our fish to this polydarium. I'm gonna be throwing in some guppies and some two mystery grommies that I need your help identifying in the comment section down below. That is how you build a polydarium. Now, if you wanna see how my volcano aquarium looked before it erupted, I recommend going checking out that video right there. I'll see you there. 